Hello, and welcome to the 16-bit breadboard computer series that I'm starting. This is Ben Eater's 8-bit computer, currently running a Fibonacci program with some custom instructions I added. I've added some custom instructions and upgraded these ROM chips to be uh, chips I will use in this project. Upgraded the RAM, modified it, not really upgraded. But as I've been building this computer, I've been realizing that it's not that powerful. Not to harsh on Ben Eater's computer series at all. It's a great, great learning experience. I really suggest seeing that link in the description down below. But it is an SAP one, a very limited architecture, and even most retro computers, almost all retro computers, were a lot more powerful than this. But that is why I'm making a series where I'm going to be building a 16-bit breadboard computer that runs much, much faster, has a lot more operations, has LCD outputs, you know, a keyboard, a lot more stuff than uh, this computer does. But it's still great. So the first thing I will look at for this computer is going to be the registers. There are going to be two general purpose registers, A and B. Uh, those are going to be for general purpose operations like addition and subtraction and also data moving. Then there will be the X and Y registers, which are going to be used for stuff like memory access. They're mainly for memory access, but they can be on the data bus like the general purpose registers can. However, they will not be supported in the ALU. Uh, then there is the stack pointer, which is used for the stack operations, such as push and pop. The program counter, which is used to count the program. Uh, and get the address of the current program instruction. And then there's the interrupt register, which is used for interrupts. So it will have an uh, interrupt code, and then it will have some bits for interrupt flags, such as uh, interrupt inhibit, it will have interrupt enable, and then like if an interrupt routine is currently being handled, so to disable interrupts while an interrupt routine is being handled. It's just an interrupt register to deal with that. Uh, then there's the instruction register. It will have the current instruction and the data the addresses will actually be put into X and Y, which is interesting, but I think it will work out with the architecture of the computer. That's the registers of the computer. Then there is the ALU. The ALU supports a number of operations, including addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. It will also support and or exclusive or not logical operations and then it will support shifting as well it will be able to do these on the general registers ram and the instruction register uh, then there is the memory map of the ram so this is the first two megabytes are rom the rom chips i talked about earlier uh, then the next 256 kilobytes will either be program memory or an extension of the heap. I think they're going to be an extension of the heap. I don't really see why I need program memory, but better safe than sorry. Uh, then the next almost a megabyte will be heap. The next little bit after that to make a um, megabyte will be memory management to manage the heap. And the heap is used for stuff like arrays and just general purpose memory, dynamic allocation. Uh, and then the next 512 kilobytes are for data sec section. So stuff like uh, data stored, usually stored in assembly with like a dot byte directive or is in the data section as well as variables outside of a scope in languages like C. And then the final 256 bits are for the stack. 256 kilobytes, not bits, are for the stack. Uh, and these are used uh, for like variables such as that are inside of scopes then uh we have the ports for the computer the ports uh, are a keyboard two lcd display screens uh a programmable interval timer and the storage i talked about earlier will be able to write from that that's the ports for the computer now, more about the architecture of the computer. This computer is going to be CISC. So it will have complex instructions that don't take one. And the reason for this is because uh, it is a lot easier to deal with it if you can do multiple things at once. And that way you're only doing like one fetch cycle for a three 
actual instructions as opposed to with risk on this computer. I could only do like one instruction operation and then one instruction cycle, fetch cycle. So it wouldn't be that efficient as opposed to sysc. So that's why I'm going to do sysc for this computer. And then it will support most Intel operations like the Intel 86. It will have some similarities with the 6502, but generally the two operands it will have, which is something that the 8086 did have, uh, as well as being able to do just most things that a modern computer can do. It will be slower, but that is something I want on this computer is to be able to do most uh, instructions. And so, yeah, that's pretty much the computer. There's obviously a lot more that I haven't talked about, uh, but thanks for watching. I'm gonna be uploading a video about the clock, which is the first build I'll do. Uh, pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. Please like, subscribe, uh, and comment down below. It really helps me out. Thanks for watching. See you next time.